All right, guys, so this one's a little long overdue, but I'm gonna take you through how to perfect your squat. I'm gonna cover specifically the back squat for this one. So if you're a fighter and you have been squatting or you're trying to get into squatting, I'll take you through all the details. I'm gonna cover absolutely everything you need to know. Equipment, technical considerations, little tips and tricks that you maybe aren't aware of or I haven't been told before, just from years of doing this and teaching it. So you can do this well without pain and actually make improvements in lower body strength. Now, the first one I'll cover is equipment. So typically, I would choose not to squat in your normal, for example, <coughs> shoes. Because in your normal shoes, you see how soft and rubbery these soles are? It makes it really difficult to have stability when you're doing your squats. So you're either going to go barefoot, which requires more mobility, or you're gonna wear weightlifting shoes like I'm wearing now. Now, if you're not familiar with Olympic weightlifting shoes, they essentially have a hard sole, so they don't compress or squish. You have an elevated heel, and that hard sole is either plastic or wood. You have an elevated heel that ranges anywhere from 0.5 to like one inch. 0.75 inches is the typical standard heel height. Uh, these ones are 0.86 inches. These are the Velasa Strikes. These are my favorite weightlifting shoes at the moment. So weightlifting shoes, they're gonna help with stability, but they're also gonna elevate the heel. Most people's limiting factor when they're squatting is their ankle mobility. So when you're going barefoot, you're gonna be limited by ankle mobility, most likely. So having this elevated heel is going to help you. You can stand on plates or like a wood, piece of wood or a wedge to elevate that heel, but it is harder to get into position if you're squatting heavier. So I'd highly recommend something like weightlifting shoes or a flat sole shoe if you don't have mobility problems. Next, you have knee sleeves. So there's a couple of different options in knee sleeves. These are like seven millimeter ones. So this will be your standard weightlifting or powerlifting knee sleeve for squats. And then you have kind of like a, almost like a knee warming cover, I guess. This is from Hook Grip. You don't need knee sleeves. They're just options. Now I will say if you squat often and say a seven millimeter one, it's like wearing a wetsuit around your knees, right? Your technique can change slightly where you really push into these to get the, uh, the rebound and stretch out of them. So I typically recommend if you don't have any knee problems, don't wear knee sleeves. If you do have knee problems, try and address it so you're not squatting with knee sleeves all the time. I would say these are not necessary, so I wouldn't bother with these. And the last one would be a belt. Now, I've, I don't wear belts when I lift. It's not because I think they're not useful. It's just I don't feel like I need it. <laughs> and you can wear belts, especially as you go heavier, but you can lift beltless. And I'm gonna show you the techniques you can use to actually create that brace without a belt. And then last thing that is not talked about is socks. And Tom Platt's talked about this. He's one of the greatest squatters of all time, where he would make sure he would wear long socks up here because it feels more compact which I tend to agree with. So wear long socks instead of short like ankle socks. It will feel better when you squat. Alternatively, you can wear like compression uh, garments as well on your legs. Those also feel really nice when you squat too. So those are just some things to be aware of. So that covers the equipment aspect of squatting. Now we're gonna go into the actual technical portion of this video. And we're gonna start with breathing and bracing because I don't need the bar to do that. And this is probably one of the more important things to learn for when you're gonna squat. Because if you get this wrong, that's where you start getting funny postures. When the weights get heavier, it feels too heavy. Uh, you get folded over by heavier weights. So the goal is to be able to create a brace around your trunk, and that is a 360 degree brace, and be able to breathe without it collapsing. So one issue is people will breathe into their chest. So they'll be here, and they'll breathe into the chest. Now the problem is, as soon as you breathe out, you lose that tightness in your upper back. And obviously if you lose the tightness in the upper back, you lose the squat. So you want to be able to breathe down here into your trunk. And I don't say breathe into your belly because you don't just want your belly to expand. You want your entire, think about everything surrounding your spine. You want everything to come out and expand. Think of this trunk area here as a cylinder. So what you wanna do is you wanna brace like you're about to get punched in the stomach. So if you breathe out really quickly, you'll feel this brace around here. And that brace is when you, you want to keep that brace, like I'm keeping it right now while talking to you, throughout the entire squat. And then when you breathe, you're gonna take small breaths into this brace. And you're essentially expanding. You, sh you should feel your lower back and your obliques expanding. And you'll feel a little bit in the front too. 
You should not feel anything in your upper chest or shoulders, and you shouldn't feel like you're having to relax and pushing your stomach out. You'll have this strong brace, so, and you're gonna breathe and expand, and then that is gonna fill up your braced trunk. You're gonna keep this throughout the entire squat. So you're gonna have the bar, you're gonna create this brace, unrack the bar, you're gonna take this breath, and then you're gonna descend. Now importantly, typically we're told to breathe out on the way up. Honestly, it's fucking bullshit personal training trope that gets taught to every single person who starts to lift weights. You're not breathing out on the way up, you're forcefully pushing air out but keeping the brace. Because if you just breathe out and lose that brace, you know, back injury, whatever else is gonna happen. So you wanna keep that brace, so you'd be, and then on the way, so you're gonna squat down, and then on the way up, it's, but I'm still keeping that. If it's a really heavy squat, you're not gonna breathe out. It should just be natural. You shouldn't be trying to force a, an out breath, if that makes sense. So I wanted to cover that first before I get into the technical details. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you and talk through the setup and the squat from this angle. I'll get some other footage, so um, close up footage for you as well, so I can put this over it. And then uh, it should make a little more sense as I piece it together, rather than just talking to you from an angle. So regarding grip width, you wanna be as close as possible to create a tightness in your back. So obviously it's gonna be flexibility dependent. You know, If you have really tight shoulders and chest and you have to hold the bar out wide, that's just what you have to do for now. Now be aware that you don't wanna force your way in too quickly because you will run into elbow and wrist problems and they linger for a long time. So wherever you're comfortable, if you look at the outer rings on your bar, so the weightlifting ring is the further one outside, the powerlifting ring is the further one inside. You can go, ideally you'll be inside the rings, but again, flexibility is dependent. So once you have your position, you sit up under the bar and the bar should sit on your traps. This is a high bar squat. This is probably gonna be the easiest for you to do and is not so dependent on flexibility like the low bar squat to get a bit further down. And I think it's just better overall for the depth you're gonna hit and just for targeting the entire lower body. So out for high bar, if you haven't done it before, your traps will probably get be sore, but just bear with it and eventually it goes away. So after I've braced under the bar, I'm here. I, I don't want to complicate my walkout. So instead of being one, all these different steps, you should train yourself to be able to pick the bar up, one step, two step. That should be your position. If you start taking more steps and the weight's heavier, you're just gonna lose your tightness. It's gonna be very hard to squat. Now with your feet position, your feet are gonna be slightly pointed out. Do not have your feet pointing straight forward. And the reason for that is you want to create space for yourself to sit. If we just have our feet forward and we squat down, we run out of space. So if I, unless you have really good ankle mobility, right? So if I'm gonna squat down like this, like. At some point, if I didn't have this mobility, I wouldn't be able to get into this position. I want to create space for my hips to sit into the hole. So if I have my feet slightly out, now when I sit down, I have space to sit and it's much more comfortable. That's why the feet point slightly out. Now, they don't have to be all the way out, just a slight one and 11 o'clock, if that makes, uh, makes it easier. So then when I do squat down, when I break at the knees and the hips at the same time, which I'll cover in a sec, my knees follow my middle toes. So <clears throat> I'm not here trying to push my knees forward. I'm trying to spread so they come out into my middle toe and they track that way. That's gonna give you your solid base to be able to push and also create space for you to sit down in the hole. So let me run you, run you through the entire setup and the squat itself. So I'm coming up, I take one step and I take two steps. I'm in my position with my toes slightly out. I brace, take my breath, and I descend. Now when I descend, I'm breaking at the hips and the knees at the same time. That's how I create or keep an upright posture. And my knees follow my middle toes. So when I'm in the bottom position, my butt and hamstrings are on my calves, and I'm maintaining that same position. Then I'm pushing through my full foot to get back to the top. Now, one of the common mistakes that, I can't blame them because they're taught by personal trainers who don't know what they're doing, is they're told to sit back like they're sitting in a chair or sitting on a toilet. Never do that. That's not how you squat. That's how powerlifters squat in geared powerlifting and suits, which is a completely different sport in itself. 
and not conducive to what you're trying to achieve. <clears throat> if I try and just sit back, look what happens to my, to my back position. There's, the bar's already over my feet. There's no way I'm gonna be able to keep that and it just puts more stress on my lower back. I want to be able to create an upright posture and that bar stays above my, essentially in the middle of my feet. So when I'm here, I'm breaking my hips and my knees at the same time. Hips and knees at the same time. That keeps me upright versus hips back. So just make sure you keep that in mind when you start squatting as well. Don't sit back, hips and knees at the same time, you're going down. Make sure your weight with your feet is centered. So you want to almost create that tripod between big toe, pinky toe and heel, weight centered, claw to the ground. Don't be on your heels. Again, that's another bullshit cue that's given to people when they learn squatting is sit back and be on your heels. No, do the exact opposite. Well, not the exact opposite because they'll put you on your toes but centered with your feet so you have even pressure. So when you push, you're pushing with your entire foot, not just your heels, and you'll be more balanced. So I'm gonna show you again with that. So I'm here, up, one, two. I have my feet slightly out. Bracing, knees go out, break at the hips. Again, as deep as I can while maintaining that position and pushing up. Now at the top, straighten your legs and squeeze your ass. And that's pretty much that part. In terms of the speed of your reps, descent, you saw that I was going down relatively slow there. You just want to control it down. Obviously, as you get more advanced, you can go a little faster down. You can catch the bounce on the way up. You can start to play funny things with your knees if you're doing that a lot over time. So typically, it's better to kind of just control. Don't worry about counting or having a specific time on the way down. Just control it down. And when you come up, you want to push as hard as you can to get to the top, no matter what the weight. You just wanna move the weight as fast as possible. Regarding your eyes and your hip position, it's a little bit of personal preference, but there are some rules you should follow. One is pick a point to look at and don't deviate from there. So find a point on the wall or wherever you are in your gym, look at that and you're gonna hold your vision on that point through the entire squat. You don't want to move as you come up and down. Now, some people like to look down when they squat here. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it can be useful for some people. I would rather pick something that's slightly above eye level, and that's gonna help you keep that big chest on the way down, which is something you don't often get, or something you can lose as you start to squat. So find something just above eye level to look at, and that'll help you keep a big chest on the way down. Do not stare at the ceiling, which is often the cue that is used to look up. If you're not looking up, you're trying to keep a neutral head position relative to what you're doing by having that eye level. If you keep that, you'll feel more stable in your squat and you won't be moving everywhere. And that should cover every technical aspect of the squat from equipment to technique. So make sure you implement this. Let me know in the comments how you go with it as well or if you want me to break down any other lifts and I'll see you in the next video.